Nearly all combustion engines ignite and burn an air fuel mixture, which means heating a substance until it burns away rapidly, but at a subsonic speed. A pulse detonation engine is a little bit different because rather than burning through the fuel rapidly, it detonates, producing more thrust from the same amount of fuel. And this is basically an explosion rather than a rapid burn. So a good way to look at this is to take this candle and light it on fire. It needs four things, heat, fuel, oxygen, and a chemical reaction to make this all work. And obviously this candle is going to take a few hours to completely burn out. But detonation would work a little bit differently because it would burn this fuel all at once. And this means that there would be more thrust obtained in a shorter amount of time. One may ask why purely controlled detonation is not pursued further in a piston engine, because you'd be able to utilize the full stroke of the piston. But the problem is, is that liquid fuels need to be broken down before being oxidized. And even if you had a gaseous fuel, you would still have problems with the components, because the detonation wave is expanding at supersonic speed. So in reality, most piston configurations are not designed for purely controlled detonation. Having said all that, there are a couple projects out there which are trying to utilize the detonation supersonic wave in an internal combustion configuration, but nothing so far has been really proven yet. A fully controlled detonation can offer substantial increases in efficiency when compared to combustion, because it is causing an explosion rather than a slow burn. And to harness this power, you need a very redundant design which eliminates complexity. It also has to be made out of a high strength alloy which can handle these continuous explosions. A pulse detonation engine can actually achieve a speed up to Mach 5. But once again, these engines are dependent on shock waves for detonation. This causes a lot of noise and vibration. Not to mention that this energy needs to be accelerated down a very long tube so that it can reach a detonation point. The next logical step would be able to control the detonation earlier maybe even having multiple detonations happening all at once. So one way to control all this is through rotary detonation. And you can kind of think of this as a one continuous exploding tornado. Fuel and oxidizers are channeled through small holes, which are then ignited by the circling detonation wave. The result is an engine that can provide continuous thrust rather than in pulses. An RDE increases pressure during detonation, whereas a traditional jet engine sees a total pressure loss during combustion. So in theory, it can be made significantly smaller than a typical jet. But RDEs can also replace smaller rocket engines. Unlike conventional rocket engines which require turbo pumps and very high pressure lines, an RDE simply utilizes its shock wave for pressure. Theoretically, it could reduce a rocket's weight by up to 30% with a far less complex design. But the problem with an RDE is that it's very similar to the pulse detonation, where it's very difficult to contain these explosions in a controlled manner. But a new breakthrough has happened, and NASA has recently tested a prototype for over 10 minutes, producing over 4,000 pounds of thrust. At 622 pounds per square inch, there was an enormous amount of pressure inside this engine. So they built it out of a GR Cop 42 copper alloy. This nifty new material can withstand extreme temperatures without overheating. And this really exemplifies the importance of developing new materials which can handle these extreme temperatures. The RDE concept has been around for some time, but it's not until now when we came up with this new type of alloy along with this incredible manufacturing process. This will eventually lead to a 10,000 pound thrust class within the next couple of years. Having said all that, we still do not have a fully reusable commercial RDE because the physics to this type of engine is very complex. It is heavily reliant on computational fluid dynamics. So you need the right computer modeling along with the right mechanical equations to formulate something that can actually work. Ultimately, there have been very recent innovations that allowed RDEs to become a reality. We are living in very strange times because we already know that algorithms can design an engine with certain specifications given. I think this is all going to come down to whether or not AI can discover new physics or materials. And if that's the case, RDEs along with rocket engines could be completely displaced by something else. 
More importantly, I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.